I'd better take a shower and get dressed before I go downstairs. Gone shopping. I'll pick the kids up from school at lunchtime, and then I'll come home to get things ready for Jason's birthday party. Don't work too hard. I love you. Nice day outside. 
Maybe I could squeeze in a little garden time.
plans are coming along nicely. Should be finished by Monday. Hey, Dad. take it easy, you're gonna knock me over. Uh, so this is your big day, huh? Am I grown up now? Mmm, ten years old, that's not exactly grown up, but you're getting there. Now, can I drive your car? And I think you're gonna have to wait a little while for that. <laughs> Ethan, can you please help me? I'm coming. I've been so excited since this morning. I could hardly keep them in line in the supermarket. How's your day been? Managed to get any work done? I made some pretty good progress. I've just got to work on a few more details and then I should be ready to present the plan to the client. Ugh, I've got a billion things to do. It'll never be ready before Jason's pals arrive. Can you please help me? Uh, there should be plates in the living room cupboard. No problem, leave it to me. That door is always sticking. Give it a big tug. That's the set my mother gave us. Be careful, okay? Don't worry. I wouldn't want to be responsible for a diplomatic incident with your mother. I don't know if I've already told you this today, Mrs. Mars, but I find you very attractive. You're not so bad yourself, Mr. Mars. I know what's on your mind, Ethan. But now is not the right time for it. Shame. I've really got to focus on this party. We'll continue this little conversation later. Can I do anything to help? No thanks. I should be able to manage. Jason looks happy. Yeah. It's hard to believe he's ten years old today. It seems like only yesterday we were flirting in high school. 
we're getting old, Ethan. When are Jason's friends coming? Oh, uh, about 2 p.m. Oh, God, I hope I'll be able to keep the situation under control. Not like last year. Did you find the present for Jason? Yeah, I uh, picked it up from the store this morning. Oh, we were lucky. It was the last one in stock. I'm thirsty. Should be some orange juice in the fridge. Oof, it's stuffy in here. I should get some fresh air in the garden. How about some music? It, I'm free as a bird. Hey, five minutes, boys, okay? After that, we've got to eat because your friends are going to be here okay, soon. Okay, we promise, Mom. Who wants to go first? Me first! No, me, me first! first. <laughs> Easy, fellas. You can both have a turn. Me first! Me first! No, me first! Okay, Sean, get ready. Here we go. Jason, let's do the helicopter. Careful, hang on. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ready, kids? You We're come coming. in. Sean, lunch is ready. I'll go get him.
Sean. What's up? It's Merlin. He's dead. He's dead and it's all my fault. No, it's not, Sean. Of course it's not your fault. I'd give anything if you could come back to life. You know, Sean, there's some things which just have to happen. Even if you don't want them to. It's not fair, Dad. It's not fair. I know. Jason. 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 Jason, you really shouldn't wander off like that, you know? There's an awful lot of people in here. Please, Dad, can I have one? I would really love to have one. Please, Dad, come on. Okay, let's go buy a balloon. Great! Hey, champ, what's your name? Jason. Which balloon would you like, Jason? Uh, the red one. Here you go. That'll be two dollars, sir. Jason, wait for me. Wait for your dad, son. It's really crowded in here. to try on a pair of shoes with this crowd. Where's Jason? He was here a second ago. I bought him a balloon. I turned around and he just disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean, disappeared? Stay here. I'll go get him. I'll be right back. Jason! Quick, I need to go downstairs now or I'm going to lose him in the crowd. Jason!
Jason! Jason! Jason! Jason! Jason! What's your problem? Hey, man, watch where you're going. Jason, God, you really had me scared.
Greece has Sean this weekend. Seems like he can't wait to get back to his mother.
Hey, stop messing around or I'll never be able to film you. What do you want me to do? I wrote a reminder note on the board in the kitchen. Do you want me to get your dinner? No thanks, I'm not hungry yet. Sean, do you want to do your homework now? Please, Dad, let me watch TV a little while longer. We'll do it later, okay? Alright, I'll come back a little later. What do you say we play together for a while? I'd rather watch TV. Nothing special. You've got a cold coming on. I'm gonna see if I can find some medicine for you. All right, all right, I'm sorry. Here, take this. It'll make you feel better. Thanks, Dad. 
Do you want me to get your dinner? Oh, yeah. I'm really hungry. Okay, I'll go see what I can find. I'll call you when it's ready. You can come now, Sean. Your meal is ready. I'm coming! Come on, Sean. It's time for bed. I'm not tired yet. Can I stay up a little longer? All right, we'll wait a little before going to bed. But don't say anything to your mother, okay? Why'd you turn it off? It was my favorite show. Turn it back Come on, Come on, Dad. Sean. It's time for bed. I'm not tired yet. Can I stay up a little longer? Come on, Sean. It's time for bed. Now, not that's not very yet. reasonable, Can is I it? You have school longer? tomorrow. You have to get some sleep. All right, I'm going. Are you coming now with me? Now, go brush your teeth and put on your pajamas. I'll come up. All right, I'm going. Are you coming with me? Go brush your teeth and put on your pajamas. I'll come up.
Good night, Sean. My teddy. I haven't got my teddy, Dad. You must have left it somewhere in the house. Do you have any idea where it could be? No, Dad. Please, I can't sleep without him. All right, I'll have a look around and see if I can find it. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Good night, Sean. Night, Dad. Yeah. Why do you look so sad? I think I just need some time to get back to the way things were. You know, Dad, what happened to Jason wasn't your fault. Good night, Sean. Lauren Winter. Ring any bells? Nope. Can't say it does. Oh, that Lauren Winter. Third floor, last door on the left at the end of the corridor. Lord 
winter? Sorry, I only see clients by appointment. Wait. It's 50 bucks. I don't kiss and I don't do any weird shit. Fine by me. Put your money on the table. You got exactly 10 minutes when the alarm rings. It's over, okay? You should take your clothes off. We ain't gone all day. Actually, I'm not a customer. Ugh, shit, a cop. I should've known. What you want, a freebie? Is that it? My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. The families of the victims of the origami killer asked me to investigate the murders. I came here just to ask you some questions about Johnny. I already told the police all I know and have nothing to add. Leave me alone. I understand, Lauren. I know what you're going through. Oh yeah? You know what it feels like to find your own son's body on a wasteland? I'm sorry, I don't believe you have the slightest idea what I'm going through, Mr. Shelby. The killer is walking around free as we speak. He'll kill again if he's not arrested. My Johnny's dead, so what difference does it make? If we don't find the killer, there'll be other mothers who find their son's body on a deserted wasteland. But, but, but you're right. Why should you care? It's not your problem anymore, right? What do you want to know? How did your son disappear? He used to go play with the neighborhood kids after school. It was pouring down something awful that day. I'll never forget it. All his friends came home around five. I'll accept him. Did Johnny live with you? Yes. Of course, I made sure he never met any of my clients. I wanted to stop, you know. But we needed the money. I was trying to earn enough to get us out of here. Do you know if they found anything on the wasteland? Any leads or witnesses? No. He said he must have run away and he'd probably end up coming back. His body was found five days later with an origami figure in his hand and an orchid on his chest. <laughs> Did you suspect anyone after he disappeared? I meet a lot of pretty shady characters in my line of work. Sure, I thought of it at first. But it didn't seem to make any sense. I don't believe any of my clients could have done that to my Johnny and all those other kids. Time's up, Mr. Shelby. I hope you got what you wanted. Now get out of here. Well, if you remember anything, the smallest detail, give me a call.
Sorry, Dal, but I really wanted to see ya. What do you want, asshole? Lauren, is everything all right? She's just swell. Now beat it, loser! You again? If you're looking for trouble, you found it! I'm gonna beat the shit out of you! Oh. Yeah, an asshole. Are you all right? <sighs> Better than him, I guess. Who is he? An ex-client who thinks he owns me. He was getting violent, and I told him I didn't want to see him anymore. Well, you should be careful. He'll probably be back. Sorry about the mess. Mr. Shelby? Yeah. Thanks. Zone is sectioned off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course.
check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. Video memo recording from Agent 47023, Nam and Jaden, Tuesday, October 4th, 2011. Time is 8.14 a.m. I'm looking for Lieutenant Carter Blake. Thanks. Some orchid pollen. The concentration of pollen in the air is quickly decreasing because of the rain, but it gets higher in the direction of the body. Airy comment. Pollen particles disappear in the tall grass. It's probably the end of the trail. Footprints continue just after the pollen train. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Traces of blood on the railroad train. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. Harry comment. Traces of blood detected on the fence behind the railroad line. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Very common. Tire 
tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. Lieutenant Blake, I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning, they told me to be here. Now if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Mike, will you tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself think here. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? So, what happened? Some guy taking his dog for a piss found a body about 6 o'clock this morning. We don't know much more right now. Based on what we've seen, looks like the work of the origami killer. Has the body been identified? No, not yet. We should know more later today. Any news on the coroner? He's on his way, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for an hour, for fuck's sake. Has the time of death been established? Based on the rigor mortis? Must be less than six hours ago. We should know more once the coroner has had a look. Any witnesses? None yet. Given the neighborhood, I'd be surprised if anybody saw anything. Tony, I don't want to see a single shit-stirring journalist within a mile of here. You got it? Yes, Lieutenant. Do you have any leads? My men are going over to the scene with a fine-tooth comb. If the killer left anything behind, we'll find it. Listen, you look busy. Do you mind if I have a look around? Be my guest. Hey, Jaden. Come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Are you drinking there? There's some in the thermos behind you. Help yourself. Sample of no interest. It comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland.
Harry commented, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. Superficial wound on the right thigh. The blood is identical to that on the fence. Think I've seen all there is to see. Harry comment, sample of no interest, comes to one of the policemen present on the wasteland. I'm gonna leave. I see you in the office, right? Okay. See you later. A butterfly. A fox. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. 
It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? I know he's really unhappy. He just can't understand why I seem unable to love him. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I stopped living at the same time Jason did. When that car ran into us. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? Have there been any cases of split personality developing after a concussion? Like people doing things but having no memory of what they've done. Like somebody else had been doing them. We know that in certain cases, a violent shock to the brain can cause serious psychological disturbances, like schizophrenia, for example. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. How did things go at school today? I was punished because I didn't do my homework. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Aren't you gonna go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. Do you want to eat something? A boomerang? You know how to use it? No, not really. I can never make it come back. Can I give it a try? be able to improve my catch. Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on, let's try it together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! Good job, Sean. See? That wasn't so hard.
I'll find something else to do with him. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! I'll find something else to do with him. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! Training for astronauts, though. <laughs> You want to go play on the swing? I'll push you. Okay. Pushing dead. Come on, Dad, higher. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll find something else to do with him. I'd like a packet of strawberry flavored chewies, please. Thanks. Hey, I got you some chewies. I hate strawberry. Thanks. It was nice of you anyway. Looks like rain's coming. I think you better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's the dollar.
Do you think it's going to take long? No, he should be finished soon. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get them well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press... They're all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it is none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Jeremy Bowles was found this morning on a patch of wasteland in the East End at about 6.30 a.m., five days after he was reported missing. An autopsy will be conducted tomorrow to determine the exact cause of death, but going from first indications, it would seem that he drowned. The state in which the body was found suggests the methodology of the origami killer. 
The investigation should confirm this in the coming days. The police are continuing to work around the clock to find the murderer as quickly as possible. I'll field some questions. Yes. You said the methodology indicated another victim for the origami killer. Can you be more specific? An origami figure was found in the victim's hand, and an orchid was placed on his chest. His face was covered with mud, but there were no visible traces of violence to the body. Go ahead. Uh, the Zodiac killer was never identified. Perhaps the origami killer wouldn't have been found either. I don't think there's much chance of that. in any way, and we have only the murders to help us understand his motives. Yes.
Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This... this is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and thirteen. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned. In rainwater. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent,
calm and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geoprofiling any easier. Killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. Just one origami store in town. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know! I know I can make it! This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marshall. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. 
I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Five thirty, I think. I'm not really sure. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Brown pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I, I did. I I didn't leave. I watched the carousel. How could Sean and possibly have vanished if you were right there watching the carousel? I don't know. I, I don't understand. You say you took your son to the park after school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I went home and waited for him there. I thought he might have gone up with some friends and they could come home soon. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... but it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say.